In today's Python Pandas video, we're going to be going over 15 different examples of using a loc or loc. Now, loc stands for location. And what you can do on this side of things is use labels to either get or set rows as well as columns. So with that out of the way, let's jump right into some code. All right, let's jump right into it. So first thing we're going to do is import pandas as PD. We'll run that line. And then what we'll do next is we'll create a data frame. Um, but before we jump into the data frame, we're going to just build out a simple dictionary. So data equals, and then we'll create this dictionary over here. Now inside this dictionary, I'm just going to paste what I already created. And we'll show you that in a second. So we have a merchant ID, we have a merchant state, merchant city, and merchant volume. These are just like randomly generated merchant IDs. Then we have a few different states, a few cities, and volume, which we could interpret this as like a monthly volume or a yearly volume. It doesn't really matter too much. Now, if you don't want to type all of this out, I have the code on our website, which is going to be linked down below in the description for the full article as well. So that way, save yourself some time. But Regardless, if you want to type this out, go ahead. If you want more practice with dictionaries, just pause the video, type it out. Um, I'm going to see if you guys some time though. So remember that cell and what we'll do next is create a data frame from this. So really, really easy. We'll say df equals pd dot data frame and then just pass in our data like that. And voila, you are done. Okay. So one other thing I want to do is set our index for the video. So we're going to say df dot set index. And we're gonna set our merchant ID as the index. So just say merchant ID, and then we'll say in place equals true, in place equals true, like that. And great, we have that now. And just to show you what this data frame looks like with the index in place, we're gonna say df.head, and I'm just gonna put 10 over here. Obviously we don't have 10 records, but you can see we have our index, which is our merchant ID. Then we have our other columns, merchant state, merchant city, and merchant volume. So with this out of the way, we are ready to jump into our different examples. So we're just gonna build up our examples over time. And again, if you wanna copy this code all on the website. So we'll say example one, right? We can select a specific row. So what we can do is just do df.lock over here. And then let's say we wanna grab a row with uh, one of these IDs. So in this example, right, let's just say we want to grab this first row. So I'm going to just copy that merchant ID. I'm going to paste it right over here, right? And what you'll see is I get all the information. We have our index, which is here. Then we have merchant state, merchant city, and then the volume of the merchant. So super, super basic, but we can expand upon it, right? So what happens if we want to grab multiple rows? Let me show you that. So we'll say example two, and this is going to be multiple rows. So what we have to do this time is df.lock and we're going to have two pairs of brackets. So what we'll do is we'll keep this first one. So we'll just throw that in over here and then we'll put a comma and we'll put our second one in. So what I want to grab this time is let's say we want to grab this PRK924. So we'll just pass that in over here. And now you'll see we have this over here. So we have two merchant IDs merchant state, city, and volume all once again. All right, well, how about if we wanna grab a row and maybe a specific column? So we're showing all the columns right now, but I don't wanna show all the columns, right? I just wanna show maybe the merchant state. So how do we do that? Well, we're gonna do that in our next example. So example three, and all you have to do is go over here, df.lock or loc, however you wanna pronounce it, and pass in our first row. So I just want to look at this QTZ since we've been using it a lot. And what you'll do now is put a comma. So after this comma, this is when you're going to target specifically a column. So I want to grab the merchant state and then we'll just throw that in over here. So merchant state, and you'll see that we get the state of California. All right. How about if we want to select multiple columns? Well, we can do that as well. So we'll just see over here, multiple columns. And I'm gonna grab the same code over here, right? And we're gonna modify it. So just like I showed you with multiple rows, we need to have two brackets around this. So I'm gonna go over here and have that, right? So we have our outside brackets and then we have our inside brackets. So we have merchant state. And then what I wanna also take a look at 
is the city. So we'll grab our city and we'll populate that in over here. So we have our row, right? And then we have the two columns we want to take a look at that are in brackets. So we run that and you can see we get the state of city and right state California, city Los Angeles. All right, let's put these together, right? And let's take a look at multiple rows and multiple columns. And let's do like sample five and let's jump into it. So what we'll do is we'll grab all of this code over here. We'll slightly modify it again. I'm just going to remove this and we're going to go back up over here where we grabbed multiple rows. So we're going to grab the same data, right? And we'll pass it over here. So again, if you're going to grab multiple rows or columns, first you use your lock or loc, right? Outside brackets. And then since you're grabbing multiple, make sure you have brackets over here on the inside and then pass in your multiple rows or pass in your multiple columns, or you can do both, right? Or one or the other. So now we can take a look at these merchant IDs. We have the state as well as the city. So there's that use case. What I wanna show you now is filtering. So we're gonna say example six, and what we're gonna start off with on here, and let's jump right into it. So we're gonna say DF, and inside over here, we're going to look for when the merchant state is Florida. So what we're going to do is merchant state. We're going to, that's going to be equal to Florida. So like that. And there we go. So we have our merchant ID, state, city, and volume. And this is honestly where I use look the most is just filtering down. But you can see, right, we grab the column over here of merchant state. And we're looking for that to be equal to Florida. Right, and inside over here, it returns this row, right? We have MFS, it gives us the state, city, and merchant volume. Well, that's just a string, right? How does this work specifically with integers, right? So we have our merchant volume. Let's take a look at that example. So what we'll do this time is look at merchant volume. And I'll just go over here and save merchant volume. I'll also scroll up a little bit. So this is a little bit higher on your guys' screen. And we're just going to look when this is going to be greater than 50,000. Now, since it's not a string, we can just pass in 50,000 like that. Well, this is great, right? We, we printed out everything that we wanted in the data frame. Well, what happens when the data frame is more complex? You may have 50 or 100 columns and you don't generally need all that information, right? We want to filter down specifically on just a few. So. What we can do on that side of things, let's use our merchant volume example. And this is, I believe, example seven. And we can select the columns. So we have this filter, right? We're looking for merchant volume greater than 50,000. And we're gonna go back to what I showed you, right? So what we can do is pass in here in another set of brackets, our merchant city. So let's say we wanna get the merchant city and then we wanna get the merchant volume. So we'll go over here, merchants, volume i'm just going to scroll up a little bit and you'll see right city and merchant volume we no longer show the state so again after this first comma these are always going to be the columns right rows then we jump into columns and that's literally what you have to remember for look right rows columns rows columns. all right so I showed you how we could filter on one condition. I showed you how we can select, you know, specific columns. But what I didn't show you is a little bit of a wrinkle of complexity where we specifically look at multiple conditions. How do we do that? So what we'll go over here is example eight. And I'll show you how we can do this for and as well as or. We're going to start off with and. And let's say we want to take a look at a merchant that has over 50,000 and the state is Florida. So based off of these two filters that we already built out over here. So what I'm gonna do is just paste these down over here. I'm gonna create another line. We'll paste the first one, and then we'll paste the second one, and we'll work on this together. So on the outside, right, we still are gonna use lock or loc, and we'll have our pair of brackets, okay? And this time, since we're using multiple conditions, we're gonna have to put each condition within parentheses. And since I wanna have both of these conditions to be true, what we're gonna do is put and over here, and then we're gonna have another set of parentheses. So again, multiple conditions, each condition has to be in this set of parentheses, right? We have our and, 
which means both have to be true and we have either. So now what we'll do is literally just populate this. You can see DF merchant state, populate that there. And then our 50,000, we will populate that in over here. I'm gonna remove these. And what this does is only show one merchant, right? There's only one merchant that is in Florida in this data set. And there's only one that also has the condition of 50,000 in volume. And that makes sense, right? This has 90,000 volume, so it meets this condition. And it's also in Florida, so it meets this condition. Well, we can also take a look at something that's called OR. And how OR works is you just put a pipe like that, right? So this means one of the two conditions have to be met. Either the merchant is in Florida or the merchant volume is over 50,000. And you could change this up if you want, right? Let's say we want to look at Washington this time. That's actually what my example code has. Um, so we look at Washington and 50,000. And you can see that there's four of them, right? And the reason why I change it up to Washington also is because you can see over here, the volume is under 45,000. So with this Washington, right, they are under that 50,000 threshold. But because they meet that Washington state, they should populate over here. These others all populate 50,000 or greater. So that's why they show. And honestly, if you remove this greater equal, right? and you see like when we remove that equal side, right? We lost one of those rows, which was I believe California that had it. And you can see Los Angeles 50,000. So that's how you use multiple conditions. Okay. And one last side of things, right? Let's say you want to take a look at um, certain types of columns with multiple conditions. How do you do that? Well, once again, you can just go over here put a comma here at the end and then specify the columns that you want to see. We've been going through multiple examples where you look at like merchant city or merchant volume. You can just throw that in over here at the very end. Again, rows, columns, right? And you can see merchant city, merchant volume. We aren't populating the state. This is helpful again, when you have a much larger data set. All right, so now what I wanna show you is modifying data. So we'll say modifying data. Well, we'll say example 10 in general. And we'll look at modifying our data. So what we'll do over here is df.lock or loop. And we'll first identify a specific merchant. So in this case, I want to modify Tampa. So we're gonna grab our merchant ID, that's MFS. So we'll paste that in over here. And then we'll grab our merchant state. So we have city, I'm just gonna rename that into state. And just to show you what this looks like first, so state and look, we grab Florida. So that makes sense, right? Tampa, Florida. Well, for the video, I did a little research. I tried to see where there was another Tampa. Apparently there was a Tampa in Kansas. So maybe this merchant is actually in Kansas. This is some bad data we wanna clean up. So all you gotta do is now that we've identified, you know, a single cell in this data frame, we can just go over here we can say this is equal to KS, right? We're gonna say that's Kansas. So all we did is set an equal sign. We identified a new value that we wanna set this equal to. And if I go back to our data frame, we go over here to head, say head, populate 10, right? You'll see now that we have Tampa and it's located in Kansas. No longer are we in Florida, we are in Kansas now. So there we go. And uh, yeah, so, what we'll take a look at now is slicing. Another important concept. So we'll go over here to slicing and let's jump right through it. So first is gonna be a single column. And I didn't show you earlier how we grab a single column, right? I showed you how we can grab a single row, but we didn't add the complexity of a column. Well, the reason why is when you do a column, you want every single row to populate. Um, if you're just looking at all the data present for that column. So how do you do that? Well, the first thing is literally just a colon. So a colon, what this represents is every single piece of data. So we have that over here. And then let's say we wanna look at the merchant city column. So we'll say merchant city. And what you'll see is we have all of our rows for that merchant city column, which is awesome, right? So now what I wanna show you is that slicing is a little different within lock versus, you know, I lock or loc versus I look. And what we'll do on this side of things is we'll slice some of these different merchant IDs, right? So we'll go over here. I think we're on example 12. 
So what we'll do over here is say df.loc. We'll pass in our first. So we'll say, we'll start off with uh, QTZ. So we'll go over here, say QTZ, and we'll go to MFS. All right, so we'll have that. I'll run that. And you'll see we have QTC and MFS. Now, this is where slicing is a little different between iloc and loc. So with loc, your last one that you have over here, right, will show. Versus iloc, this will not show, right? So start over here, stop, right? In loc, the stop point will show. In iloc, the stop point will not show. And maybe I'll do a full video explain the differences between loc and iloc in the future. But regardless, that is going to be one difference between both of those. It's really important because it does trip people up, right? So you can see this is included. If this was iloc and we use, you know, integers for our index, this would have not been included. Um, you can also take a look at this from the column perspective, right? We'll say example 13 and literally same exact thing. So what we'll do on here is df.loc. Remember, since we're looking at columns and we want to grab all this information, and two typos, all this information, you put a colon over here. And then let's say we want to grab merchant state, merchant city. So we can just go over here and say merchant state through merchant city, city like that. And right, we have our merchant ID, which is our index, and then it populates both of those. All right, um, one last thing I wanted to show you guys for this and we'll do a review at the end is skipping. So you can skip, it's another colon. So we'll skip with rows first. And uh, I should have just put example 14. Again, these line up directly with the website. Um, I may update the article in the future after I post this video. So these may be slightly out of order, but again, all the code will be there and everything like that. And I'll try to explain if any modifications. Um, but anyways, what we can do is df.loc over here. We want all of our information, so we're going to start off with the colon. We're going to add in a second colon, which allows for skipping. I'm just going to put two, and you can see it skips every other row, right? So we had five merchants. We put two over here, so it starts at QTZ, right? It skips over VXL, then it goes into PRK, skips over MFS, and then goes to JDN. And you can do the same thing with columns as well, right? I can just go over here, example 15, and again, just go on this side of things. We'll just modify that. We'll put another colon like that. And now this skips over um, our merchant city, right? We show our merchant state and then also our merchant volume. But yeah, that is essentially it for loc. Um, just to recap this once again, what the, the most important parts of it, right? This is based off of index on this side of things, right? When you're taking a look at a row. So we put our index value on here. You can also take a look at multiple rows or columns, just remember you got to have double brackets. Remember your first part of loc is going to be your row. Your second part is going to be column. You can also set values. I showed you with that example where we put equal at the very end and we set this to Kansas, right? And uh, what it's really useful for is going to be filtering, right? So you'll see this used quite a bit as you advance with Python. Um, so you'll see like in this example, we did filtering for specific rows and then we only cared about columns. So this is probably your most useful use case, which is example seven over here, where we took a look at merchant volume over 50,000 or greater than or equal to 50,000. And then we grabbed the merchant city and merchant volume. Super, super important that you pick this up really early on within Python Pandas. It, it, it's asked a lot in interview questions. So make sure you memorize that. Remember, we filter over here, right? What rows do we wanna see? Well, it's based off of this filter. And then what columns do we specifically want to see? And you know, maybe practice a few times. Once you have that down, uh, keep moving forward. But it's just such an important concept for you guys to grasp. And yeah, that is about it for this video. Thanks guys for checking out this Python Pandas video. And if you found value in it, make sure to subscribe to the channel. We're trying to upload two to three videos every single week. Now down below in the description, you'll find a few other videos that you may like, as well as links to mentorships and also our free Discord server. And if you wanna continue this Python Pandas playlist, well, just click right over here to check out more videos.